All right, guys, welcome back to another video. It's your man Jay. So today we're going to be looking at my 14-inch MacBook Pro. This is the M1 version. Uh, and ultimately what I've done here is I made a decision to not quickly jump out and get the newer version of this computer because this one is actually really good. And also what I'm going to show you in this video is a lot of times often, often people would tell you, I have the Mac Mini M2. I have the M2 over here. Uh, and it's it, it gets tough when you're trying to purchase a computer because what you're running into is you're running into a lot of techy uh, tech savvy people online, and they're giving you all these technical terms and basically repeating what Apple says uh, on their on their launch event. But for me, I want to use the devices as much as I can, uh, and then come back to you later on and report videos to you as I run into issues or you know updates happen. It could be anything. So with me, I just have the M2 on this side my Mac, my current MacBook here, and then the new MacBook here. And, um, you know, before I get into that, this computer has been, been great, man. It is a powerful computer. Uh, and recently uh, I've been having lots of conversations about the M2 Mac Mini, the base model. Well, technically this is the base model of the 14 inch. And depending on what your workflow is, just, that's gonna determine what you should buy. Now, a lot of people, when they're watching videos, <clears throat> they're watching videos to try to get them to help take them over the hump, I think, to help make that final decision. Uh, but for me, I don't watch videos. I, I mean, I am a creator, but I don't watch videos solely to help me find the answer to um, making a purchase. I want to see, find out if I can watch that video and find out things that I didn't know already or, you know, just learn more. So the M, the 14 inch MacBook Pro M1 is what I have here. Now, uh, in another video, I said the only way I would leave this device and sell this device is if I go up to a 16. In the interim of doing that, I was like, man, I really like the size of this. I know the 16 inch has a bigger canvas, but I have a Mac mini uh, M2 and I have a complete office. So when I'm on the go, if I need something really powerful, this could be an option to stay with the 14. I even thought about going to a fort, uh, uh, the MacBook Air M2 just to kind of save, you know, on weight and things like that. But what I've learned is that um, this 14 inch MacBook Pro M1, this is the original one that I purchased uh, back in 2021. As soon as it launched, I bought it. And whenever that date is, I'm sure some of you guys will figure it out. Um, you can just search back when it launched. But this is the original computer that I purchased. And I sold my M1 Mac Mini and got this. And you know, I thought that was the best thing I could have done for myself. And in fact, I was, I was right because this is very powerful. And you know, we're talking about in 2021, we're in 2023 right now. So in 2021, this was a very popular computer and it probably still is right now. Apple's just bringing out an M2 Pro version with just one number up, the things that these companies do, you know, they'll make it a little bit faster and things like that. But when I get into the meat of this, I'm not really getting too much more by switching directly to the 14 to 14. And that's why I was like, you know, I should probably should go up to the 16 if I do decide to make a change. But to me, that just kind of defeats the purpose of me being portable. And that's, that's kind of where I am with it. So I chose to keep the 14 inch for now. Uh, and if I do get another MacBook Pro, I'm probably never going to, I'm not going to get rid of this because it's just too good. It's a really solid laptop. How many problems have I had with this and uh, since I had it in, since I got it in 2021? So it's, what, it's been almost, what, a year and a half almost? Um, I don't know. Uh, and how many problems have I had? A zero. Zero problems. No issues with this computer at all. I mean, not one problem. Software updates come in. Um, and in fact, I even removed my Apple Care because I normally have Apple, Apple Care on everything. But you know, I haven't traveled that much with this because I bought some other laptops to travel with. Because at the time, this was like my main computer. You know, this was all I had as far as uh, I wanted to use for editing and things like that. And I have like five or six other laptops. But I decided to um, get some other laptops to travel with. Uh, and, and that is what I did, like more compact, more, I got the Surface Go Laptop 2 is one of my best, one of my favorite laptops to travel with because of the aspect ratio. Uh, and then, you know, it is very nice and compact and it goes into any backpack, it, lightweight, premium hardware still, it is really solid. But 
the 14 inch MacBook Pro M2, what I noticed was it's not that much more difference enough for me to decide, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and go to, I guess I should say I'm gonna go ahead and sell this one and then go up to. Because when I look at these numbers here, I'm not really getting too much difference uh, in, in GPU cores uh, enough to make me say, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and spend that money all over again. You know, I mean, Apple's obviously it's going to be a little bit faster than the this model here, but is it enough to say, hey, you know, you should go ahead and switch? Now there is a 96 gig version. I don't know. I mean, somebody might need that. I guess I don't know why a person would need that much RAM, uh, but I mean, there's a use case scenario for everyone, and I'm not going to knock on that. Uh, there is a use case scenario, but you know, when when you get down to the thick of it. You know the GPU is really is what they're all they've really changed really on this computer. I mean that's that's the list. That that's it. That's it. Oh, right here, multi-channel audio output. But I mean, when it comes to buying a computer, you really have to dig deep. Now this has Wi-Fi 6E, yes. It has Bluetooth 5.3, yes. But is it really enough for me to say, oh my God, I have one gig up and one gig down and I can do a speed test right now and it's gonna be really fast. Uh, and I have Wi-Fi 6E routers in my home, so obviously I will be able to take advantage of this right here all the way. But right now I'm already getting six, seven, 800 sometimes of my one gig down and up, you know, when I do a speed test. So it's really not that serious enough to switch and, and everything else is, nearly it's identical there's nothing else difference oh we get an hour more pretty much is what they're saying that's 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 it I mean I don't I don't know that I'd want to switch and move on to here and this video is also for people because remember there's always someone who's asking should I do this there's always that one person that's asking should I go ahead and switch I got this right here. And again, in my other video, I talked about temptation on things and how people sometimes, myself included, I get tempted. That's why I say, you know, I'm not going to say I'm never going to do it. And that's why I say as of right now, I have no intentions on selling this and getting this because it's not that big of an upgrade. Now, if I, let's just say I do the 16. Here's where we get it. And I could easily get, uh, man, I could easily get a um, M1 Max or M1 Pro uh, version that in the 16 and it's still blazing fast and I could save a lot of money by doing that where could I get that I can buy them new at Best Buy or just anywhere that any retailer is selling them but I will I would buy the re, a recertified one directly from Apple because I get a military discount government discount and on top of that it will be discounted so I found some seriously low priced 16 inch M1 Maxes and M1 Pros, like $2,000 for an M1 Max that's um, loaded up fairly well. I mean, that's it, it, and it's a 16, like two grand or 1900 or something. That's a fantastic deal. Now, here's where the, the big differences would show um, if I decide to go to an M2 on the 16 inch. Um, you know, it's it's just a it's a it's a much better deal, uh, and my price is much lower than that, much lower for a brand new one. It is a lot lower. Um, so you get into more cores, and again, the GPU really is the only difference here, but you get more screen resolution this time, uh, and you know that that's pretty much it. Aside from all the other things I pointed out, you just get a bigger screen resolution. A bigger screen and a higher resolution uh, but the pixel count is going to be the same more than likely and so I am still not convinced that I should switch yet but for those people out there who are thinking about switching you were thinking about moving from your from your 14 now I will say this people who have an older MacBook if you have an older MacBook let's just say you have a 13 Pro uh, or you're on one of the Intel processors Oh, for sure. You, you you should have gone to an M1 a long time ago. You could even get, if you're on an Intel processor MacBook, you could go to an M1 MacBook and be totally happy. You you don't have to spend this kind of money. 
you you seriously can get a very nice MacBook, uh, or um, if you're on a Intel Mac Mini, you could spend so much less money than going directly to these models right here. But there is a lot of people out there who are on the fence about whether or not they should switch to this model right here, or you know give up this model and get uh, you know the newest models and and if i'm being honest i'm one of those people just because i'm a creator i still want to have one of the most powerful machines that i can have so i can have that if i want to use it this thing is i used to keep it in a case but i don't anymore but you know nonetheless if you're on the fence about your 14 inch macbook pro and you have a 2021 models like me you really got to think hard about what you're giving up and what you're getting and so you're going to spend you're going to start over on the money and then you're going to get an hour more battery possibly you're gonna get some more GPU cores and then after that what are you getting that's pretty much it so this thing has been phenomenal for me and I use it every day I mean there's not a day that goes by that I don't pick this up even if I'm not editing or something like that or you know I'm, I, I, I use this daily and then obviously I have the Mac mini too so uh, M2, so I'm using that in the office when I'm in the office, but there's really not much more I could possibly want from Apple. They're gonna have to really do something spectacular, I guess I'm gonna say. There are some refreshes coming, but not anytime soon because this was a this was the major upgrade for the MacBook Pro because they brought back um, the ports. They brought back the MagSafe, I've got two Thunderbolt ports and a headphone jack, and then I've got an HDMI slot and an SD card slot reader and another Thunderbolt. And then they have the stereo speakers and they've, they've got the good ventilation on the back here. And they just gave it a new redesign. It, it, they just did a great job with this particular MacBook and, and, and giving it some kind of refresh for how long it had been for the MacBook Pro lineup. So if you're on the fence about it, do your own research. This video was just to show you some of the differences if, you're, if you already have a 14 inch MacBook Pro should you really switch to the newer M2 models or should you if you just really want to go up and upgrade if you have the 14 it's probably best to go to the 16 because you'll get better speakers a bigger screen you know better battery life there's a, and you get that high performance mode in the 16 that was another reason that high output mode on the 16 that was another reason why I was considering going to the 16 from this uh, but that doesn't mean I, I don't have to sell this I, I just you know I just I know that I would have to give this to someone else to use because I probably wouldn't use it as much and it would probably only be used if I am going somewhere and leave the 16 here because I've been speaking to people uh, about the 16 inch and how heavy it is and things like that and is it really worth you know and a lot of them love their 16 inches but they don't have the 14 so you know this is this is heavy and so I know the 16 is going to be heavy uh, but those people if they were to try the 14 I think they would really love the way this feels in comparison to the 16, which is why I started here. But if you're on the fence about whether you should get the new 14 inch or 16 inch, if you already have a 14 or 16, you're probably gonna sit still. If you have an Intel version of this computer, you might wanna go ahead and consider, if you still don't have an M1, you might wanna consider getting the M1 MacBook Air would probably make you happy coming from the Intel processors. They are blown away by the M1 chip. It's just that simple. This is your man Jay. If you guys enjoyed discussion, MacBook Pro 14. Should you switch to the newer models or should you stay where you're at? See you in the next one. Take care.